Time now for the Sunday Talk, where we tap into the debate of the week. This week, the twilight zone of pot. Longtime crusaders Mark and Jody Emery were arrested. Their dispensaries shut down. As governments and businesses, small and large, gear up for the day pot's legal. I'm actually not in favor of decriminalizing cannabis. I'm in favor of legalizing yeah. it. Justin Trudeau ran on a promise to legalize recreational marijuana in Canada. Legalization of marijuana will be part of, uh, of the Liberal Party platform. Legalization is coming and it's because of people like us. Activists rejoiced and entrepreneurs have jumped into a dank green gold rush with dispensaries popping up across the country, all of them still illegal. Until we change the laws, the laws stand. Some claim that after decades of prohibition, even a mixed signal is a green light. They're breaking the law where they're breaking an unjust law because the federal government has promised they were going to legalize marijuana right away. But those that lit up too fast are getting burned. Health Minister Jane Philpott is promising more clarity with new legislation in the spring. People need to recognize that things take time. This is something that has to be done correctly. Some suspect the uncertainty hits small players, while big corporate players are on the sidelines waiting to get in on the action. This industry is being taken away from the people who built it through a, a government attempt to usurp the cannabis culture and community. One thing that is clear, there's money in all that smoke. And the politics of pot will have winners and losers. I'm joined by our panelists. Stephen Marsh is an author and writer for Esquire. Tasha Carradine is a radio talk show host in Toronto. And Supriya Devetti is a talk show host, too. <laughs> so I want you to mix things up a little bit here, Stephen, because, yeah. I mean, these stores, th these shops, they're illegal, and yet you think that the busts were a little ridiculous. Why? Well, we have, not only has, has the Liberal government promised that they're going to legalize it, but you have the Prime Minister joking about his own pot consumption. It's just a ridiculous double standard, and they've been in power now for a year and a half, and enough is enough. I mean, you, every day that people are being arrested for pot busts at this point in history is an embarrassment to the law. But why an embarrassment? Well, because... We know what's wrong. The government has been elected to change it. They're refusing to change it. The, 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 the politics of the matter have been established. And yet people are going... These, these businesses are paying taxes. And yet they're going to jail for doing what we all know is widely accepted. And which the Prime Minister <laughs> accepts. It doesn't sound like you accept it. I don't, we know what. Uh, the government also promised electoral reform. We're not seeing that either. They don't, sometimes don't keep their promises. And I think the issue here is for a lot of municipalities, uh, two of which have been cracking down, Ottawa and Toronto in particular, on pot dispensaries, because I think they're feeling that people are flouting the law and it is sending a message, not just for this law, but for others as well. So they are cracking down. If anything, if you want the government, Stephen, to legalize marijuana, this is more of an incentive for them to do it than if nothing happens. If people were able to simply break the law with impunity, the government would actually have no pressure on it to fulfill its campaign promise. So in a strange way, I think that pot activists and people who want to legalize marijuana should look at this and say, yeah, more pressure on the government. Maybe they will actually go through with their legislation. What's your take, Stephen? Um, I agree with Stephen in that the raids do end up looking not great for the Liberals because I think ultimately they should have probably decriminalized it during this interim period as they were drafting legislation or as they were going to put forth mm -hmm. legislation. But of course, as Tasha notes, the law is the law. This, there is no technical gray area here. It is quite black and white, and they are breaking the law. In this case, though, I question whether the law was applied uh, equally. It seems to be that Jody and Mark Emery were targeted in a way, because there are lots of other dispensaries in Toronto and in Montreal uh, and in Hamilton and Vancouver that weren't raided and that were busted. So this optics-wise doesn't look the best for the Liberals, but the dispensaries are in violation of the law. So then how do you explain that? then why are they targeting the Emerys? Because there I, are other chains that are very successful. I mean, that's a great question, and that's a question for law enforcement, I suppose. I, I, I'm guessing because they were probably one of the most outspoken dispensary owners, and they probably had a, the best case against them when it came to things like trafficking and conspiracy to commit a crime, um, because they were quite open and transparent mm -hmm. about their activism. If they're going to say, you know what, actually, we're not going to legalize marijuana, then fine, arrest these people, shut these things down. But that's not what they're saying. You know saying. what, the government, if it wants to give an amnesty to them after the law is passed, I think the government would be in a position to do that. But I think, as Supriya pointed out, there is a law. And if you simply say, well, because the law is intended to be changed, we will turn a blind eye to people breaking it, then that you're going to have 
eventually you're going to encourage people to break other laws. And whether you like it or not, everyone's getting so upset about the marijuana legislation. There are many, many issues the government is dealing with. The fact it hasn't legalized it, I think, does break one of its key promises. It's, it has to go that route. It's promised well, to legalize marijuana. But the, the idea that um, for some reason, because they haven't done something yet, you should be able to do the exact opposite is ridiculous. But they're doing the exact opposite. I mean, the law is being brought into disrepute by the fact that they're, they're in action. That's a The law may be in disrepute, but that is not a crime. If people want to pursue, when someone wants to take a case against Justin Trudeau for, uh, I wouldn't say breaking a promise, but as you said, say that they should prosecute him because he has admitted smoking marijuana, let them do that. But the point is that would be ridiculous. And the government here has a position where it said it will bring in a law. Until they do that, though, you have to respect the law. And the Emery's, I agree with Supriya, there's a lot of evidence, probably. It's a prosecution decision as to whether they would actually be successful They're going to have to arrest everyone evidence. in my neighborhood. Well, I, I mean, mean they're going to have to arrest <laughs> They're going to have to everyone in a 12-block <laughs> radius from my house. Yeah, look. Because when you go for a run in my house, there's no question what side of the law people are on. And I agree, and, and this is the thing. I, I think smoking marijuana now has become so ubiquitous and, and very much socially acceptable to the point where it is, it, 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 we have this image of our, of our head of what a pothead looks like, and I just don't think that rings true anymore. I think you have professionals, I think you have mothers, I think you have people that are your neighbors and your friends and your colleagues that probably imbibe in this once in a while. And you he know, spoke and to that, millennials, he did speak to young people. Exactly, as well. the yes. The Prime Minister's been very clear. I, I mean, I don't think his social position on this is at issue at all. And as far as I can tell, they, they have not, you know, made any... that they are going to go back on this promise. So we are in a very gray area, and every day that someone gets arrested for this law that nobody believes in, the law is brought but into it's disrepute. it's false to say nobody believes. That's absolutely false. And to say it's socially acceptable, I agree. Within certain uh, groups in society, a lot of people accept it. But not everyone accepts, for example, that people who are 18 years old should be smoking marijuana. The no, CMA neither do I, by the way. No, neither do I. Just, just and I'm for the saying, record. And I agree. And, and, and the, the thing is, the CMA has said that age is too young, yet the government task force, well, by its recommendation, well, might Well, there's lead... a lot of neuroscience behind it, actually, that until your prefrontal cortex is developed, exactly. you, in fact, shouldn't be smoking marijuana So there's marijuana a lot of debate still amounts. around the law. There's a lot of debate and a lot of regulation that has to happen before the law goes in. It, the government was irresponsible to promise this quickly. I agree. But... Uh, at the same time, they do have to do it properly. But so here's the other thing, though. This is not beyond the wit of people to do. Like, it's been, t it's going to be two years <laughs> before this could possibly happen. Like, Colorado has done this. Places have done this. This is not impossible. So this just not let them sell all the candies and all that. Colorado's a state. Not, there are, I, all I would <laughs> no, like Colorado's not a country. No, I, I think it's some one jurisdiction. clarity. I would but, say, say some clarity. Yes, but, here, but, but here's the thing, though, that we're all assuming also that once this magical legislation pops up, that storefront dispensaries are going to be allowed. Mm -hmm. And there's, in fact, been no indication that that's the case. Exactly. The so government what is going to happen, yes. Sophia? I mean, uh, yeah. there, there's billions of dollars potentially at stake here when this becomes legal. Um, how much of this is about money? How much of this is about controlling the market? I think a lot of it is about money, and I think a lot of it is about controlling the market, and that's why you see some of the larger corporate players are making quite the active push to keep dispensary owners out of the game. And, and I think when you have... Um, this sort of, you know, tug and, and t tug of war between who can control the market, it ends up being that those who are the best organized, not just on the ground with grassroots, but who are the best organized in terms of getting their community to petition their local MP to say, we don't want storefront dispensaries or we don't want, you know, X, Y, or Z type of, of selling um, of, of marijuana, those voices tend to win, win out. And I think we're getting ahead of ourselves in that a lot of people are calling the liberals hypocritical in this, but they've never said we're going to allow storefront dispensaries. They're mm -hmm. never said that you can walk into a shop and be able to get a pot cookie and then, you know, eat it when you're 18 and, 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 and go about your day. And in fact, it, they've actually signaled to quite the opposite. By having Anne McClellan head the task force and having uh, Bill Blair be the pot czar, if you will, to be the main point man on this file, has signaled that they're going to take a harder line than I think people like the Emery's and other people that are on the ground of this cannabis culture, if you will, mm -hmm. have uh, been pushing for. Yeah, and the, the idea that um, it's going to be unanimous as to how pot is sold is absolutely false. I mean, uh, Kathleen Wynne had mused about selling it at the LCBO. Which the is ridiculous. And the task force completely came out against that. So it sh should not be sold and in And discussion of maybe liquor. sell it through Shoppers Drug Mart or one of the other chains. Exactly. But, I think and, but, but, you know, but every every province is going to have a, probably a different regime too. So the legalization of this, to say that, you know, the Emory's are being victimized, they're paying themselves as, as big victims here, I think there is a sense that there's going to be a lot of confusion at first as to how potentially it is sold. So to say dispensaries should be allowed to pop up like grass everywhere is false too. So to speak. Yes. Budding businesses. Good pun. Exactly. Good yes, oh, excellent. We'll weed ourselves yeah. out. But do you buy that? Do you, th that they have been at the forefront of pushing for this change, the changes happen? 
the Emerys. So therefore, it's only fair that they're the ones who get to make money no. off? No. Whatever the government decides is fine. Whatever, legal, whatever framework they come up with for doing this is great. They just shouldn't be arrested for doing a law that nobody believes in. Well, for but, for but violating a law that nobody do. believes in. You say in. nobody. It's not well, the, unanimous The people of Canada, Canada believe, elected a government no, that believes the, the in the legalization of Yes, but the, the, the Liberals were not I elected by... It. Everyone in Canada, and there are people who do not believe they believe in decriminalization, not legalization. The Liberals were elected by 40% of the population. To say everyone believes in it is false. Like, don't use that language. Is all I'm saying. Okay. Fine. Many people do, but many people the there's also a great the zone. sitting government the sitting believes government. in it. So the right. sitting government believes in it. There's a huge social acceptance, and yet these people are going to jail for it. But you also, if, they, if it gets sold to some large corporation and they have some monopoly, and that is the decision that government comes to. And, and these uh, dispensaries keep popping up, then shut them down. But until there is some kind of actual regulatory clarity, it seems to me irresponsible to keep to keep arresting them. I, I, I just bring it back to the Emery's. I, I, I do think if you shut out a certain segment of the population that has been on the forefront of this and has been the one that has uh, you know really changed our acceptance of it, you're going to inevitably uh, create some sort of, if not black market, then a gray market of people that... Well, there's never been that before. Be a, there's well, black market yeah, anyway. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but there's going to be a black market anyway. And just for the Emory's to take credit for creating a cannabis culture, I think is false. I mean, Canadians, actually teenagers in Canada, consume the most cannabis of any teenage group around the world. I don't think the Emory's were the one. ones... Yes, but only the Emory's can say it was because of well, us. Well, I'm not saying so, the Emory's... I'm, like, I'm not saying the Emory's are solely responsible for changing our attitudes, but I'm saying mm. people like the Emory's, people that have been bringing uh, cases to the Supreme Court, people, oh, okay. people that, that, that are, you know, on the ground really organizing. I think we have to, we owe a lot of our pot acceptance, if you will, to them. <laughs> well, great debate. It's not over yet. We'll see the, uh, the legislation in June, and maybe next year it'll be law.